Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mark and in this channel, it's my objective to help you enjoy your life better. One of the main topics that I cover is in personal finance, so let's get on today's video and find out what I have in store for you this week. In a previous video, I shared with you how you could get invested in real estate investment trusts or REITs via BDO Securities. For this video, we're actually going to be doing a bit of a deep dive into an upcoming IPO REIT under Megaroad, also known as M. By the end of this video, I hope that I'll be able to help you decide if you should get invested in M REIT. And here I've put together some facts, some observations, if in fact I think M REIT is worth your money. So without further ado, let's go! So the Megaworld Real Estate Trust is set to debut with the IPO price of 22 pesos. The expected dividend yield for the next few years would be between 4 to 5 percent. So that's something that may be attractive to you guys. As I shared with you in the previous video, what makes REITs different would be the requirement for them to declare 90% of their bottom line profits as dividends for investors. Now let's go through the portfolio of MREIT and its projections. MREIT is composed of 10 properties spread across three cities, namely Taguig, Quezon City, and Iloilo. For the gig, these are all situated in the McKinley Hill Township, namely 1, 2, and 3 World Square, 810, and 1820 Upper McKinley Building. For the properties at Eastwood, Quezon City, 1800 Eastwood Avenue, 1880 Eastwood Avenue, and E-Commerce Plaza. And lastly, for Mega World's Iloilo Township development are One Technology Place and Richmond, which is divided into Richmond Tower and Richmond Hotel. So from the fund prospectus that Megaworld provides, all buildings are within PESA accredited zones or are PESA accredited, meaning that being situated in these buildings would have some tax benefits for the company itself and for its tenants. Let's quickly go into the financials. The appraised value of the 10 properties would be at an estimate of almost 50 billion pesos. Starting 2017, the top line revenues amount to about 2 billion pesos each year with net income at about 1.1 billion, meaning that the net profit rate here would be a little over 50%. 42% of the company will be what's made available to the public, meaning that Megaworld as the sponsor and mother company would retain over 50% of the company. So yup, those are the quick figures from the 1,000 page prospectus that Emery provides. I didn't exactly read it front and back. Front and back! I did skim through that 1,000 pager just so that I could share with you hopefully some nuggets of wisdom if in fact this MREIT investment is worth your money. So looking at the properties and the nature of business that they're operating, 9 out of the 10 properties have office space leasing as their core business, while one of them, Richmond in Iloilo, half of it is devoted into office space leasing, and the other is Richmond Hotel, obviously in the hospitality business. So if I were to look at it, I think that's one of the things that caught my attention at first. Since I myself am a business owner in the hospitality industry, I don't know the prospects of the hotel industry in Iloilo, but so far the pandemic hasn't been kind to the tourism industry. I guess it's slightly concerning to me. But anyway, most of MREIT is almost entirely devoted into office space leasing as its core business. Since the buildings do work with a bit of foot traffic, there is a component of retail space leasing as part of their portfolio. Moving on to the meat of the matter, what really got me thinking was this. Should you be investing in office spaces in a world that's mostly work from home? So as we review the Emory business further, what's very good to note here is that the current occupancy rate is at 93.2%, so that's really good. And reviewing their fund prospectus, it's actually interesting to note here the percentage of lease contracts from tenants that will be expiring in the next few years. So for 2022, it stands at just 10%. For 2023, it's at 30.7%. For 2024, it goes down a little bit to 13%. And for 2025, this actually goes up to 42%. So again, these are the percentages of contracts that will be expiring in the next few years. If you add those up and no one renews in the next four years, that actually amounts to almost 100%. But that is a scenario that's unlikely to happen because Megaworld, the parent company of Emory, actually shared they've leased out a total area of over 400,000 square meters since the pandemic started. And despite the setbacks of the pandemic, for new leases that were signed, 60% actually account for renewed contracts 
So these businesses that are operating in the Emory properties aren't there just because they're stuck with a the contract they've actually renewed, while the rest, the 40%, would be new tenants amidst the difficulty, clients have renewed their contracts, and new clients are even coming in. So why is that? Why is that the case? So a big percentage of Emory clients are actually BPO companies. Now, this is very critical since BPO offices have not been subject to the large migration of offices into work from home environments, simply because BPO offices really need people still to come into work. Close coordination and supervision is really needed. And since the Philippines is pretty much the back office of the world, they are in need of highly reliable internet connection. So this is very good news for the Mega World Group and prospective investors of Emory knowing that these BPO companies are here to stay. So yes, BPOs as the number one client of MREIT will continue to provide rosy business opportunities for MREIT. Lastly, since these buildings are located in Mega World Townships, one of the changes that the pandemic brought about is that there's this speculation that cities are now dead. People are said to be leaving New York, Chicago, and all the big cities and moving to the suburbs since there is the work from home alternative. That actually had me thinking early on in the pandemic. And I was thinking, what's going to happen to BGC or McKinley Hill and Eastwood or what's going to happen to the Makati CBD? Well, thinking about this, you know, these cities, these mega world townships, I think they're here to stay. Because unlike in the United States or other countries where they have good infrastructure and they have good urban planning and city development, they do have the option to be moving to the suburbs, to bigger houses, to bigger spaces. In the Philippines, unfortunately, we don't have that kind of option. If, and even if we move to the suburbs, into houses in Bulacan or Laguna in the south, I think there's no replacing the cities because they just have the aesthetics and the right infrastructure to support a balance of proper living. So in my opinion, our local, privately developed cities are definitely here to stay. Despite the setbacks of the pandemic, despite a lot of people working from home, the business of Emory will continue to be fruitful from my own opinion, and I'm not a financial advisor. As an individual investor, I am going to be investing in Emory, and if you think their business prospects are also rosy, I think you should consider it as well. But hold on, before we end this video, I actually spotted a few things that you also might want to consider. So a few things that may impact the bottom line of the Emory business. Maybe not too large of an impact, but maybe it's something that you should consider anyway. Emory actually goes out of their way to give disclaimers that despite the careful projections, there's no assurance for investors to be getting the 4-5% to dividend yield. But I think this goes for any business anyway. Mega World goes through that disclaimer to let you know that investing in their business, as much as it's promising, also entails some risk. So I have here three points. So number one, as mentioned earlier, all of the buildings are situated within PESA accredited zones, but the document actually states that PESA accreditation is not a guarantee. They can also lose this accreditation for one reason or another, and thus also the potential to lose some of the tax benefits of the current PESA accreditation and related to those tax benefits. The document also states that the bottom lines of the company may also be impacted by the continuous effects of the enacted train law which was set in place starting 2017. So the train law has actually been good for employees when bearing the grunt of those tax changes would actually be the bigger companies such as Mega Road, such as MP. This is just a caveat that the company also puts out there. And the number two thing that you might have missed out on for MRE and actually for many of the REITs that have come out was that when you invest in MRE and you buy into the buildings, you actually buy into their leasing operations. You're buying into that part of the business. You're actually not buying into the land. The land on which the buildings stand are still owned by the parent company and sponsor Mega World. Maybe other people think that they're also buying into the land, the actual property. In this case, that's not part of the investment. This doesn't really impact the bottom line so much, but I just wanted to put it out there and to be perfectly clear, you're not buying into the land as the land is still owned by Mega World Corporation. So in the event that Mega World sells the land on which the Emory property stand, as a shareholder of Emory, you will not be reaping any benefits from the sale of the land. Emory is actually just a tenant of Mega World itself, which is the landowner. 
And number three, while we've gone into really trying to understand these 10 properties that Emily is coming out with, the thing is the portfolio can actually change. We've seen this with the Ayala Land REIT. Earlier this year, they've actually expanded into adding other buildings in the portfolio of a -Reed. So this may happen also with Emery. And Kevin Tan actually also says that since they're in control, they can add to the portfolio. They can actually also rebalance it. Just have that in mind so that you're not too fixed also about thinking that the portfolio is made up of only these 10 initial properties. So what do you think? Will you be investing in Emery? I think the investment prospects are promising. If you missed my previous video on how you can invest in REITs via BDO Securities, you can check on it here now. I hope that I've somehow given you a few points to consider and hopefully you can arrive at the conclusion yourself if you think Emery would in fact be worth it. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching guys and happy investing.